Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and today we're going to be looking at some interesting little secrety type things in Animal Crossing New Horizons. And yes, we're being a little bit loose with the term secret, but this is all kind of semi miscellaneous stuff. It's all right though, because we're not going to start the video by saying you can hold B to run. There's loads of stuff in Animal Crossing New Horizons that the game just doesn't tell you about. And we've already done one video, and this is kind of a follow on to that. It was kind of like tips and tricks, and it did well, that's why we're doing another one. But there's nothing repeated in that one in this video, so make sure you go and check that one out by clicking the link in the description, but only after you've watched this one. Thanks. But anyway, that's more than enough waffling, let's dive right into things. Let's start things off with something small and very unlikely for you to be able to pull off, just due to the fact that a lot of it's down to chance but I did it. You know those presents that float on balloons in and around the island and they come every so often and there's too many of the bloody Easter ones? Well, yes, you can use a slingshot to shoot them down. That's not the secret, don't worry. The interesting thing is though, is that you don't have to necessarily use a slingshot in order to get it down because as long as it is at the right height and you have a cliff nearby that you can climb up, you can actually just use a net. You can just whack that sucker out of the sky. And I can't believe I actually did this, because I saw someone else do it and I was like, I'm never getting capture of that. This one really isn't of any real use, unless you don't have a slingshot, but you do have a bug net and the balloon does come near a cliff that you can climb easily. It's, it's never really going to happen. It's not likely in the slightest that this is ever going to be useful, but it is interesting. And I think that's worth talking about. I just think it's nice that there's some weird consistency in the world that, yeah, you can hit things with the net, Hit the balloon, the balloon goes pop, and down comes a prezi. It's just nice. You could argue that this one is technically useful, maybe, um, maybe not. You know what it's like, you're shaking a tree and then all of a sudden, oh no, a wasp's nest that appears to have just appeared overnight somehow. That's not how wasps work. And you've got a few choices. You can use a bug net to catch them. You can run indoors. You can sit on a stump and just wait for things to take their natural course. Or you can carry a party popper, shake the tree and then let it loose and they'll just go doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, yeah, again, not useful. If you want to recreate this, just buy a party popper at Nook's Cranny, shake a tree, and then just go pop with it, and they disperse. Again, th this isn't useful in the slightest, but it's just really interesting that they think to code that sort of thing in. It's exactly the same kind of thing as the net. Nice. Holy lordy, something that's actually useful. Say it isn't so, Alex. Tools break. It's part of the nature of the game. It's designed to irritate you. <laughs> and apart from things like the vaulting pole and everything, none of your tools last forever. Eventually they're going to break, which can be kind of annoying. And then you have to make another one and carry a load of resources around or go back to your house and your storage, which you still can't access the stuff in your storage at the crafting bench in your house, which is mm. But what you can do is you can, in essence, repair it. And this is something that we have actually featured in an entire video because we thought it was so chuffing useful. And that's why we didn't have a video for the other two things on this list so far. Rather than waiting for one of your tools to break and carrying around, allow, 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 carrying around a load of resources in order to make another one, especially if you're going to a mystery island or something and you really want to bring back loads of spidery boys instead. Instead, you can just use customization kits. Take your shovel or your fishing rod, doesn't work with axes unfortunately, customize them to be a shiny new color, and that actually resets their durability as well. And the game doesn't mention it. I'm not entirely sure if it's intentional, but hey, it works. You do have to be sort of consciously aware of when your tools are gonna break though, so it's not ideal. But if you've got a rough idea or you're on the island and you're sort of thinking, oh, I'm worried this is gonna break soon, Customize it, forget about it. This next one's actually useful as well, or at least it was for me, yes! You know how you can eat fruit to pick up trees and break rocks and things like that? Oh, it's so irritating standing there eating fruit over and over again and slowly going diabetic. Why not make yourself a little bit healthier and instead of just eating 10 pieces of fruit, you can just eat a single, and I use the word single in inverted commas, turnip. Yes, I understand, obviously, turnips, people want to hang on to them and use them and sell them because they're worth a lot of bells, or they, they can be in theory, but at the same time, it's incredibly useful because if you just eat one turnip, and I say one because it's technically ten, 
one turnip is 10 turnips, you will fill up your fruit meter immediately. And that is so, so useful if you have to move a load of trees, like an entire orchard, you just look at it and you think, well, those are too close together. I want to move them all down by one square so that there's two squares between them. I actually had to do that because I'm an idiot perfectionist. And yeah, it's expensive. If you buy turnips at the average of like 100 bells or something, it costs a thousand bells in order to do this. But at the same time, I've just realized it's the same amount. A hundred bells for a native fruit and a hundred bells average for a turnip means if you eat 10 of your native fruit, that's a thousand. Eat 10 turnips that you spent a hundred bells on, that's a thousand. Turns out it's not even stupid. Eat turnips, fill your thing up, fill your boots and stomach. Have you ever seen your islanders hanging around in or on the plaza usually and they start singing and it's like beep, 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 beep. And there it just seems to be some random tune. You don't really know what's going on. Well, guess what? You can make them sing the tune of your choice as long as you own it. By placing a music player near this villager and if they're on the plaza, just kind of put it on the edge. Hopefully it's close enough. Select your track of choice and they will actually sing along to it. Alex, shut up for a moment so they can hear it. Again, not useful in the slightest, but it is charming and it is fun. And I like seeing them sort of singing along to different things. It's amazing that they know all the songs. And at the same time, it allows you to prove once and for all that DJ KK is the best song. Don't at me, KK rock fans. Yeah. Kind of an addendum and not a great one because I, I don't have footage of this. Sorry, your villagers can play musical instruments that you leave out and about. It's not every musical instrument. It's not any musical instrument I own, obviously. But the ones that stand upright and uh, that just sort of stay in place and you can walk up to them, press a button and it goes bam, 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 bam. Villagers can interact with that. I've just called them villagers. Islanders. And then if you place a music player near them again, play some music, they'll play along to that as well. Not only are they, are they vocally talented, they are instrumentally talented. Well done. <laughs> hey, it's another useless one. When you're running away from wasps, try talking to one of your islanders. <laughs> it's fun. This is an interesting one and one that obviously I couldn't recreate because I don't have access to the tools. However, was discovered by the lovely She Says of Boundary Break, who I recently interacted with on Twitter, and that was fun. You know Wilbur, the, the dodo that flies you around the place, not Orville, the one you chat to? Interesting fact, those are named after the Wright brothers. When you're at a visiting island, he's actually sort of hiding just out of view. You can't see him, but he is there. And what's more, he has dialogue that you never get to see otherwise, and this was was only found out because the lovely she says found this on his series boundary break to which there will be a link in the description check him out he doesn't get the love he deserves clearly this is some sort of leftover and originally wilbur was supposed to be available and you could talk to him and then they just hit him out the way and rather than get rid of all that text because why would you just make it so that the person can't you can't go and talk to them easy peasy but it's just it's just an interesting little thing it's just an interesting little thing it's just an end. I don't wish to alarm you, but the next one's actually useful. Again, this is something that we've made an entire video on because it is something fairly significant and genuinely useful. You can choose your islanders with amiibo cards, which I've just realized I don't have to hand. That means it's time for you to come on a little journey with me as we discover where they are. The dinosaurs guard my office. I knew it! So by using any of the non-special amiibo cards, like non-special characters like these shiny boys, these shiny boys, they don't work. You can invite potential islanders to your campsite, and you may well know that, but uh, invite them three times over and fulfill their every whim and desire, 
And they'll actually stay as a permanent resident. If you want to find out more, we've got an entire video about it, as I alluded to earlier. Check it out in the link in the description. I'm gonna forget all of these videos in the video description. And lastly, something I only discovered myself relatively recently, and I haven't actually done any research online to see if anyone else has found it, but let's be honest, it's the internet, so they have. In previous Animal Crossing games, talking to Sable of the Able Sisters in the Able Sisters shop every single day, or at least near enough every single day, over the course of some time would allow you to unlock something fun. You'd eventually befriend her. And I thought, ah, I'm not going to unlock anything. Turns out if you do it in this game, you unlock something. If you talk to Sable consistently, eventually after talking to her enough, and I'm afraid I really don't know how long that is, she will start to be a little bit more chatty. And then eventually she'll give you some patterns that you can use for customizing stuff in your uh, a customizing menu. So basically anything that can take one of your custom designs can take one of Sable's custom designs as well. I don't think, or at least I've not found a way that you can use them on clothing, sadly, but you can use them on a load of other stuff. And you know what? It's really cool. I have no idea how many pattern packs are available, but yesterday when I first found it out, I got traditional two, which immediately made me go, <laughs> it's more than one. And today I got another one just immediately the day after. I've no idea how many patterns are available. I've no idea whether you can get them every single day, but that's what seems to be happening. And you know what? That's actually really cool. I think it's a very nice and functional way to get something out of Sable because she was always useful for something and it would have been sad if all she had was delightful chit chat although I still enjoy her delightful chit chat and there you have it that's just some interesting little secrets and little twiddly interesting things in Animal Crossing New Horizons for the Nintendo Switch have you found some that we haven't mentioned or have explicitly left out because they're not that interesting let us know in the comments below thank you so much for watching if you like this video then why don't you pattern that subscribe button with a particular pattern and be sure to check out nintendolife.com for all sorts of lovely nintendo related content thank you again for watching bye bye <coughs>